Hi, my name is Andrea Sosa. I'm an intern for the Office of Sustainability, and my topic is Water 101. My learning objectives for this PowerPoint are as follows, which is to become familiar with Earth's water resources, how we use water in different sectors, how demand for water is higher than current available resources, and learn how to save water through daily habits and decisions. We're going to start off with the video that basically goes over where our water comes from, how we use that water in different sectors, how and also how our consumption of water is impacting us on a global scale. We all need water. But only 2.5% of the water that exists on Earth is fresh water. That's not very much. Knowing where fresh water is and how we manage it can help us provide a solution to one of our most pressing problems, making sure there is enough water to sustain all living things on the planet. So where is this water and how much is there of it? About 70% is in the form of ice, 30% is groundwater, and lastly only 1.2% is surface water, namely rivers, lakes, ground moisture, permafrost and water present in the atmosphere. It's a common perception that fresh water exists only in rivers and lakes, but most liquid fresh water is actually hidden underground and can be found in the most unexpected places. So, who uses this water and how is it managed? Domestic use accounts for 11% of total freshwater consumption, industry 19% and agriculture 70%. Apart from fisheries and aquaculture, farmers grow and breed the vast majority of the food we eat, using the greater part of the planet's freshwater resources. Two terms have been coined to refer to the water used by agriculture, blue water and green water. When rain falls over a field, some of that water gets stored in the upper soil as moisture. This is called green water and accounts for most of the water used in agriculture. Blue water makes up all surface water such as rivers, lakes, as well as groundwater. These resources are exploited for irrigation when droughts occur and rainfall is scarce. Often these irrigation techniques are not efficient and can easily deplete aquifers, rivers and lakes. Industry is the second largest water user, mainly due to the fact that 90% of all electricity generation is water intensive. The current water usage in agriculture and industry is not sustainable. But we are also personally responsible for the global water footprint. We know about the water usage of a typical household. In developed countries, each person uses up to 300 litres of water every day. Washing the dishes, 30 litres of water per day. Taking a shower, up to 80 litres of water per day. Flushing a toilet, 65 litres per day. Doing the laundry, up to 100 litres per load. But we consume far more water than we might realise. In fact, we each consume as much as 5,000 litres of water every day. About 90% of our water consumption is invisible to us. This is what we call virtual water. Water is essential for the production of just about everything, from goods to electricity to manufactured products. But mostly for the food we eat. Meet Daisy. Daisy needs 8,500 kilograms of wheat, corn, grain and roughage to reach maturity over a period of three years. It takes 3,060,000 litres of water to grow her food. We also need to take into account the 24,000 litres of water she drinks during these three years, not to mention the 7,000 litres used to service the farmhouse, transportation and for the process of slaughter. In total, we then need almost 3.1 million litres of water to produce 200 kilos of boneless beef. That is more than 5,000 litres for a modest 300 gram steak. Obviously, 
Not everyone on the planet consumes the same amounts of fresh water each day. In fact, people living in developed countries are a privileged minority. Think that three billion people still lack access to safe drinking water. That's almost half the Earth's population. It would make a queue of people long enough to stretch to the moon and back again. All of us, and people in developed countries in particular, must be aware how our water consumption affects the planet and all living things in it. In the era of technology and information, ignorance about our water footprint is unacceptable. Globalization has shrunk the world. We are all highly interconnected, and our consumption patterns have an impact much beyond our local communities. Live sustainably. Act responsibly. Let's not lose sight of the bigger picture. So moving on, we're going to talk about water scarcity. Here we have a graphic that's comparing the expect expected percent change in water demand in the US from 2005 to 2060 with and without climate change. So I'm from I'm sure you are familiar with the term climate change It's just basically saying, you know, how the earth is increasing in temperatures. Places that are usually dry are going to get more dry places that are wet are going to get more wet. So how does this impact, you know, water? Well, with warmer temperatures increasing, the demand for water and the amount of fresh water available may decline. And an increase in competition for water resources are going to happen in some areas. Here in the United States, this model is showing a scenario without climate change, which is A, and with climate change, B. The scale is representing the percent change in water withdrawals. So <clears throat> the blue means less than 0%, which is the least of the water withdrawals. And then you jump all the way down to uh, the dark brown, which is greater than 50% of water withdrawals. Ideally, uh, scenario A would be better because it's without climate change. And as you could see in the map, there's more blue, which is accounting for less than 0% of water change withdrawals. So we're not um and we're not harming our supply with our demand but realistically we're going to follow maybe we're going to follow model b and that one is using uh water withdrawals up to 10 to 25 percent 25 to 50 percent and more than 50 percent in some areas how do we use our water as the video stated there are three sectors in which water is used Agriculture, which accounts for 65%, industrial, which accounts for 25%, and domestic, which is 10%. Now, water use in agriculture is used for irrigating farms that support livestock and poultry sectors that also irrigate production of animal forage and feed crops. As a result, animal and animal byproducts have a higher water footprint than plant products. As you could see here in the chart or in the graphic, it shows the gallons of water consumed per pound of retail food purchase. So for a pound of pork, it's gonna take 756 gallons. For a pound of butter, it's 2,057 gallons. And for a pound of chicken, 660 gallons of water. And lastly, the biggest one of all, for a pound of hamburger beef, it's 2,463. That's a lot of water just for one pound of each of these products. So most of our personal water demand is just generated from what we eat. We then have water use in industry. And industrial water is used for fabricating, processing, washing, diluting, cooling, or transporting of products. Our biggest consumers in, of water in this sector are the thermoelectric power, which they use water for either cooling towers or they use water to actually generate energy such as uh, using steam and things like that. And it's followed by the fashion industry. And in the fashion industry, I'll give you an insight with this graphic of how, of how much water they use. Just for one t-shirt, they use 700 gallons of water. 
2.6% of the global water is used for growing cotton. And then the estimated percentage of industrial water, which is 17 to 20%, is coming from textile dyeing and treatment. We can save energy and avoid fast fashion, such as cheap and non-quality clothes that break down quickly to save water. We also have domestic water use. And domestic water use includes indoor and outdoor uses at residency. This is what we use in our house. So we use every day. And this includes drinking, food preparation, bathing, washing clothes and dishes, flushing toilets, watering lawns and gardens, and maintaining pools. This accounts for 26.8% of the toilet, 21.7% uh, for, for clothes washing, 16.7% for showers, 15.7% for faucets, 1.7% for bath, 1.4% for dishwasher, and then leaks are 13.7%, and any other uh, water usage in the house is 2.3%. I'm now going to go over tips to conserve water at home. I'm gonna start off first in the kitchen. So when washing dishes by hand, don't let the water run. Dishwashers typically use less water than washing dishes by hand. If dishwasher is new, cut back on rinsing. New models clean more thoroughly than older ones. Designate one glass or your drinking water each day or refill a water bottle. This will cut down number of glasses to wash later. And then soak pots and pans instead of letting water run while you scrape them clean. Use garbage disposal sparingly. Instead, compost vegetable food waste and save gallons every time. Don't use running water to thaw food. Defrost food in the refrigerator. Also, select the proper pan size for cooking. Large pans require more cooking water than necessary. If you accidentally drop ice cubes, don't throw them in the sink. Drop them in a house plant instead. You can also collect the water you use while rinsing fruit and vegetables. Use to water other house plants. You then have the laundry room. So when doing laundry, match water level to the size of the load. Washing dark clothes in cold water saves water and energy and helps your clothes retain the color. You could also have a plumber reroute your gray water to trees and plants rather than the sewer line. And then we have the bathroom. If, you shower, if your shower fills a one gallon bucket in less than 20 seconds, replace the shower head with a water sense label model. You could also shorten your shower by a minute or two and you'll save up to 150 gallons per month. Toilet leaks can be silent, so be sure to test your toilet for leaks at least once a year. Upgrade any older toilets. Turn off the water while you brush your teeth and save up to four gallons per minute. That's up to 200 gallons per week for a family of four. Also consider buying a dual flush toilet. It has two flush options, liquid waste and solid waste. And then while you wait for your hot water, collect the running water and use it to water the plants. Lastly, you have landscaping. So you can use porous materials for walkways and patios to prevent wasteful runoff and keep water in your yard. You can also group plants with same watering needs to avoid overwatering some while underwatering others. Reduce the amount of lawn in your yard by planting shrubs and ground covers appropriate to your site and region. You can plant na species native to your region. You could also start a compost pile and using compost in your garden or flower beds adds water holding organic matter to the soil. Use a layer of organic mulch on the surface of your planting beds to minimize weed growth that competes for water. Collect waters from your roof by installing gutters, gutters and downspouts, and then direct the runoff to plants and trees. Use a broom instead of hose to clean patios, sidewalks, and driveways and save water every time. I report broken pipes, leaky hydrants, and errant sprinklers to property owners of your local water provider. Um, at the end of this video, I do have a five question quiz. The description is in the section of this YouTube video. I hope you enjoy and thank you for helping save water. Thank you. And if you have any questions, please contact us at Sustainability Club or Office of Sustainability. Our email is csudh sustainability1 at gmail.com or at www.csudh.edu sustainability. Thank you and have a wonderful day.